Dear aspirants, welcome to Exelon Academy, an IIT Madras incubated company. I am Uday and I would like you to take you through our data driven smart test series. So let's get started. So let's start exploring through the feature of a free test. So once I click free test, in my case, because I have already logged in, it's already logged in as Uday over here, it takes me directly to what we call as the modules page modules page. So the modules page gives you a brief overview of what are all the various modules that you could choose from. So the first module is a free test, free exams, wherein you have one free test under each of the four categories, NCRT based, current affairs, CSAT free test and a free test based on a reference book. Let me take you through the uh, other modules. Module 1 is 1000 questions based on NCRT and this 1000 questions is divided into various subjects like polity 100 questions, economy 100 questions, 100 questions from modern India, so on and so forth and it ends with one full length NCRT based test series. Similarly, Module 2 is from the reference book. As we are aware, for each subject, there is a standard reference book. So for polity, we have taken 300 questions from Lakshmi Kant covering all the topics in polity. Similarly, in economy, we have taken it from Shankar Ganesh. For modern India, we have taken it from Spectrum as well as Plasi to Partition. So in all, we have 1300 high quality questions belonging to module 2. Module 3 consists of current affairs and the full length test. Once again, the current affairs consists of the monthly current affairs test, which is nothing but 800 questions in total from Jan 2020 to April 2021. So it is divided into 50 questions spread over 16 months and that's how we get 800. Then there are 100 questions from Yojana, 100 questions from Budget and Economic Survey and 4 full length mock of which 2 will be full length current affairs and 2 will be full length mock consisting of both static and current affairs. The last module is the module 4 which is the CSAT test. So the CSAT once again we have divided based on the importance into numerical ability, reading comprehension, logical reasoning, data interpretation and full length mock. Because numerical ability is substantially of the higher number, we have two tests on numerical ability, one on reading comprehension, one on logical reasoning, one on data interpretation and one full length mock test. Now you might be thinking why is it that I need to take this test? The best way to answer that is to actually take an exam and see for yourself. So let's take the NCRT free test. So I go to the test page. So here you go. So uh, just a broad overview of the layout. As you can see the name of the test over here, total number of questions 50. All free tests are 50 questions, one hour, so that you can quickly get a sense of the quality of question and the quality of analysis. Now you have the question over here and then the, the left side ones are the color codes of the questions as you keep progressing. So let me just uh, show this to you how this works. For example, for the first question, I say uh, that I randomly am ticking, I'm not even looking at the question. I click the question and I get answer. So green is for answer. Blue is for to review. Orange is for blind guess. And gray, which is the, which is the default color, is for not attempted questions. So you can look at all these uh, uh, options and see for yourself how each of this works. Now just now I just did the clear answer. So I can click an answer and then I realize that that answer is wrong. So I can clear it and not attempt the question. So that is also a possibility. Now one advantage of uh, the test series also is that you have the pause button. So you want, once you put pause, you can, as you can see, the timer which was in the reverse mode coming down from 60, it has paused. And similarly, the timer for the question, I had taken 1 minute 34 seconds, that is also paused. This will be really helpful in case you want, you do not want to give it in a test mode, but want to give it in a very slow step by step process. So I resume it. So I click it and go on to the next question. Yeah, so I come to the next question and, uh, and uh, let's say I am somewhat Sure, 50-50 on this question for whatever reason, yeah. So I feel that it is not option 2 and option 3. Just like a paper-based test, you can strike up these two options and then let's say you click this option. 
So now the third question you have attempted and then it shows you as two green. Let's do a couple of other questions. So I look at this question, right to property in India is, I am not sure. So what, but at the same time, I believe that I will be able to answer this question once I give it a second thought. So I say review later. I move on to the next question. Let's say I also put this as review later. Then there is, uh, I just want to try out my luck and you have to tell the software that you're trying out your luck. Let's say you have clicked option B and you tell to the software that this is a blind guess. So once you click it, it shows that question six was a blind guess and you move on. Let's say you have a couple of review later questions and as in an actual examination, let's say that you have only two, three minutes pending and you have a couple of questions which you want to review. Now, how do you review all these questions at one go? You can use this filter, come to two review questions and here you go. You have all the questions of review later here. So you have, you directly go to question four. Now you take a call and then you decide that uh, I'm still not sure, but let's say it's not option B and uh, C, maybe it is option A and then you move on to the fifth question. So let's come to seven also. And then I have completed all the 10 review later questions. Now I have not even looked at the question and the option, but nevertheless, let me say complete test. So it gives you this kind of a warning message. Do you really want to submit the test? This will generate a performance report. And once this performance report is generated, this attempt will be counted. As you may be aware, you can take each test three times. It also gives you the option that you may close the browser if you want, and you can come again and submit later. But now for the sake of explanation, let me submit. So since it's a three levels of personalized performance report, uh, it does take few seconds and yeah, here you go. Now the first level of analysis is a high level one line statement on your performance. As you can see that I have randomly clicked some options. Obviously many of them are wrong and therefore it gives this kind of a message. There seems to be few areas that you need to work upon on an urgent basis. So that's a very critical feedback. Then it not just that what it does. So overall it says it's a red flag as in you really need to work hard as far as NCRT is concerned. This was an NCRT pretest. And then it also says in that red, what exactly which subjects were red. So it has marked one, two, three, five plus two, seven subjects as red and it has marked polity in orange color. So orange color uh, is an indication that you are somewhat average in polity within those 10 questions. Then not just that it goes to the next level and then says within all these eight subjects, what are all what we call as the knowledge areas. So you are poor in architecture. So architecture would, would roughly correspond to uh, art and culture. You're poor in banking and monetary policy. Basics of environment needs improvement. Biodiversity needs improvement. Fundamental rights and duties, you are somewhat okay, but there are clearly no green areas. Now this brings us to the high level, the level one, which is the high level statistics. So the, my score is 7.99 in which it is five correct, three incorrect and 42 unattempted. It also shows the maximum time that I have taken for any particular question, one minutes and 38 seconds. Now comes the real number of the real analysis in terms of performance across confidence level. So this is the first thing. What is a confidence level is getting defined here. What is a 100% confidence? What is a 50% confidence? And a 33% confidence is given here. So in this 100% confidence, it clearly says that I have answered 60% of the question correctly and I have got 40% of the question incorrect. And the underlying message is needs improvement. The next type of analysis is difficulty analysis. The questions are tapped along the difficulty level, easy, moderate, tough. And once again, three color codes, green is, attempt, uh, green is attempted and correct. Uh, red is attempted and incorrect. Gray is unattempted. So you have the second level of analysis, which is difficulty. Then comes the subject analysis. How did I do in ancient India, art and culture, economy, etc., etc. Then comes your level two analysis. So level two analysis starts with what is called as a blind spot analysis. Blind spot, as it is defined here, is an area where you feel you are confident about your knowledge, but you still choose the incorrect option. Is that really possible? Of course it's possible if it is one of these three reasons. Incorrect reading of the question. 
a fundamental conceptual error or even overconfidence these are reasons because of which you will very confidently give a wrong answer and after coming out of the examination hall you will be happy until you see the key <clears throat> then we also analyze what are your strong areas what are the areas where you are doing kind of okay or average and what are the areas of improvement since i have unattempted so many questions also got incorrect number large number of incorrect questions as you can see there are multiple areas of improvement whereas there is only one area where i seem to be doing somewhat okay then it also shows the time taken for top 5 questions so it says that the five questions where you have taken maximum time are so from 1 minute 38 seconds to 15 seconds i have taken a lot of time now comes the level 3 feedback so we looked at level 1 level 2 and comes the level 3 feedback and the level 3 feedback is divided into a what went well so in what went well you get a question wise analysis of your performance so on the left hand side is the question we try to squeeze the explanation also commensurate to the question along with the most important part suggested reading the suggested reading is given at a standard level and a chapter level so that you exactly know which chapter you seem to be doing good what could be improved so it starts with blind spot questions apparently there are a lot of questions where i have confidently answered incorrectly so question number in this question question number 4 i have very confidently answered as natural right right to property as a natural right whereas the correct option is constitutional right and then because i have got this incorrect so the <clears throat> algorithm says that the suggested reading for you is in, you have to look at ncert 11th standard and study chapter 2 again maybe you need to revise it thoroughly this part had somehow slip through when you study ncert So if I look at about four, five of my incorrect questions, I can clearly understand which are the areas, or subjects, or chapter numbers that I need to study. For example, in this case of economics, so I've got something incorrect in economics, and I get to know, oh, okay, I need to go to chapter five, standard eleven of economics, and this goes on for all the questions, including unattempted question. With this, we hope. that you will be able to really revise selectively based on the feedback from this data driven smart test series smart test series i look forward to interacting with you soon thank you